Now, once we've done that, we may heat, uh, dry it if it's been exposed in a solid. You don't need to dry those plates that have, that have been wicked away. But when, uh, when you use solvent especially, not water wash that much, but when you use solvent to wash away the unprocessed photopolymer, solvent actually migrates into the exposed photopolymer and swells it. So that's why traditionally uh, uh, solvent washed plates take a longer time than the other technologies to dry. We need that solvent to get out of there until the plate shrinks down to its correct size. Okay? You would do that according to instructions. Now, <clears throat> then we do a post exposure. Uh, we've done that, and we may have, uh, we want to impart some more properties or just make sure we have it, or we want to do some light finishing. The post exposure completes the polymerization and establishes the final hardness of that plate. Uh, if we're doing light finishing, where that's like just killing that top surface and making sure we do something right to that top surface, it's exposed to the, to the UVC instead of the UVA, and it reduces the plate thickness. As a matter of fact, if you don't do that sometimes, and you stack the plates on top of each other, you may have a challenge getting those plates apart. If you've ever seen that, you could have an issue where you're either not exposing correctly, not post-exposing correctly, and or not light finishing correctly. Okay, now there's a step test. But remember, we, 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 we built that floor, but until we've calibrated our equipment, we don't know exactly how long we need to leave the, leave the light on so that the floor will grow to the height we want. So we do a test. And so we create a special plate. And I don't know why I made that. I assume I did. And we fit off six step sections like that, and we might put a number of uh, exposure here. Don't quote me on those times, but just for the sake of conversation, let's say that these are the correct increments of 10 seconds. Now, we're guessing that the 10 seconds of exposure time is <coughs> going, not, going to not be enough, and that the 60, and I think that's too high, is going to be too much. So we're going to find somewhere in this range the correct thickness by exposing each of these sections to a different amount of time. And the way we can do that is one way is, okay, we've covered everything and we've exposed that. Uh, we've exposed this 60 seconds here for 10 seconds. Then we go over here and we expose it for another 10 seconds. Now that 60 is at 20. We go over here and we expose it for another 10 seconds. We have 30, 20, 10. And we keep doing that until we actually have something like this where we've, uh, we've um, uh, exposed in total these regions to a different amount of time. We wash that plate out in the washout unit, and then we measure these with a micrometer to see which one has given us the height that we want, and then we've said, okay, that's the amount of time that we need to expose that plate so that it can be the right height. Okay. Now, with analog plates, this is, this is not that important because you're going, you're going to work with your, your plate folks to do these step tests and they're going to show you exactly how to do that. But you, with an analog plate, you might have masked part of it. I mean, I'm un unmasking, not masked that portion so that this region right here was, became as thick as the whole plate so that you can clamp it onto the washing machine, the machine you're washing. That may or may not be necessary depending on what you use to wash out your plate. So while I wrote that, it's not that critical, but there's a way to build into the plate because you have varying heights, and that won't be grabbed well by the clamp. So you want one strip that has, 
You can build in a nice place for the clamp that holds the plate onto the washer. You can build that in. And whereas, we, but with analog plates, we would do that by allowing that strip to be completely exposed. With digital, you use a piece of tape and you peel off the, the, uh, the, <laughs> the mask, so now it is exposed. <clears throat> and you may expose, you wash out your plate, and you measure it with a plate micrometer, and you log the results, and you correlate the target thickness with the amount of time, which is what I just described. Now, recommended reliefs are, uh, and the relief, remember, is the difference between the floor of the plate This right here is your relief. That distance between the part of the plate that does not print and then the part of the plate that does, that height right there is your relief. And examples of what a relief is, number one, <laughs> the minimum amount is what's recommended. But we found out, the industry found out that for a 0.114 plate, it's about 0.5. For 1.70 plate, it's about 0.55. And for a 2.72 plate, it's about 0.7. In other words, as the plate thickens, the relief also increases in height. Okay? But to illustrate something about how shallow relief can be, and this is something I was speaking to you last night, it's a very interesting thing. There is actually, and if I read this correctly, but some folks are experimenting with or something, a plate. We have a phenomenon in this industry called gear banding, or chatter, or whatever. You may have seen that, where you see that you almost have bands across your product that looks like dark light, dark light, dark light. Sometimes the gears in the press cause that. Sometimes harmonic uh, vibrations cause that. Uh, the various reasons that happened, but what's been found is that if the, if the complete surface of the plate is in contact with the substrate, well, it's not, it's, that's going to resist. So the way they do that is they make a very, very shallow relief, very, very shallow. So shallow that we touch the printing area with the analogs, and when it comes around, when it touches the substrate, we're actually touching it hard enough so that the entire surface of the plate, image area and non-image area, touch the paper. If you didn't understand that, don't worry about it because you're probably not going to be doing that kind of experimentation. But it's an illustration of uh, thinner being possible, and in some cases, even better. So now we have to establish our main exposure time, and which we cre who creates the relief that we talked about and anchors the image to the base. And we do a test very similar to the, 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 back, the back test. When we do a front test, Let's say we have a sheet this is a film negative and in that film we have dots we have lines we have reverses we have all of these elements that we want to examine once we've exposed the plate and we have the identical pattern of elements across here <laughs> so what we do is we cover one and we expose. And we cover two and we expose. We cover three and we expose. We cover four and we expose. And so this last one has always been exposed to the greatest amount of time. And this one here was only exposed one time. And then by observing across that plate the dots, the reverses, all of these fine elements, we can say, hmm, when we get to that 
third one there, the dots are exactly what we want. That is the best situation. We've correlated it to time, just similar to what we did when we established the floor height. Just the 10 or 12 times loop so I can see it at one level. And then I might look at it with a 15 or 25 or 50 times microscope so that I, then I can look at the dots and make sure that they're well formed, that I have good shoulders, and I don't have filled in reverses, and that sort of thing. Now, when I look at the dots, I have a target dot, okay? If I'm doing an analog plate, and I'm doing nice work, I may go down to a 2% dot. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it means that for a given area, that dot is going to occupy 2% of that area okay? versus 100%, which is a solid plate. Now, digital, you might be able to go down to a 1%. And usually analog is about 2 or 3%, uh, 1%. But basically what it's saying is, with my analog, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to look at my 2% dots because that's my target. I expect to be able to reproduce that with digital is one. And I want to make sure there are none I have nice shoulders, um, and if if I find that on one end uh, it was extremely terrible, and on the other end it was extremely terrible on the other direction, the increments in time might be too great. I want to have the minimum amount of increment, the size in time possible, so that I'm really comparing very slight differences in plate thickness versus this much, this much, this much, and discover that this one's okay. Well, did the optimal place fall somewhere between here? So if I can make it such that those time increments are as short as in time as possible, but I still am able to go bad to one side and bad to the other, then I'm more likely to find a, a really good sweet spot on that end in terms of time. I want to make sure my reverses are open, that they're sharp, that the letter A does not fill in, that it produces a nice A inside. <coughs> my lines, my thin, thin lines, five point lines, I want to make sure they're not wavy, they're nice and sturdy. But I'm looking more than one element. I'm looking at dots, reverses, <laughs> lines. So what's good for one might not be good for the other. And I'm going to nail a point down where everything is in balance close balance as possible. Now, establishing washout time. It's another thing that happens on a plate. And basically, it's the minimum amount of time required, minimum amount of time or number of passes, depending on what, what's happening there, required to wash out what we don't want. We don't want the plate to wash beyond what it needs or to be wicked beyond what it needs or anything like that. And this is variable. Uh, it's, you know, different plate materials might require different uh, washout wash out times. The processor type that you use, the brushes you use, the washout solution you use, the relief you're after, the solvent you're using, all of these things factor in to your washout time. Okay, so there's variability in back exposure, main exposure, <coughs> washout time. They're all influenced by plate thickness, light intensity, the system, film specifications, vacuum sheet opacity. There's all of the things that go that, that factor into the uh, washout time and your exposure time. The point being, lots of variables to appreciate and to control. 